scientists in the 1930s decided to take advantage of the giant squid axon to study the electrophysiology of a nerve cell. The giant squid axon is large enough to insert an electrode directly into it, allowing researchers to observe the electrical activity of the cell. The researchers were able to measure the voltage differences between the inside and outside of the cell as an action potential travels past the electrode. They discovered that it didn't matter which end the stimulus started from or how big the stimulus was as long as it exceeded a certain threshold for an action potential to occur. Because of this, they concluded action potentials are all or nothing responses. Next, researchers wanted to figure out what ions are crucial for an action potential. To do so, they emptied out an axon and reinflated it with a pure solution of the ions that were most plentiful inside and out of the cell, Na+, K+, and Cl-. The researchers discovered that the axon generated a normal action potential when the concentrations of Na+, and K+, were approximately the same as the concentrations that occurred naturally inside and outside of the cell, and they thus concluded that Na plus and K plus were the cell components crucial to action potentials. Lastly, the researchers wanted to answer the question, what does each ion contribute to the action potential? From studies where Na plus and K plus concentrations were altered, it was found that at rest, the membrane potential of an axon is close to the equilibrium potential K plus, and when the K plus concentration outside of the cell was altered, the resting potential changed roughly in accordance with the Nernst equation. These results suggested that at rest, the membrane is more permeable to K+. These studies also found that when the external Na+, concentration was altered, there was no effect on the resting potential, but the height of the peak of the action potential varied with the concentration of Na+, outside of the axon. This means that during the action potential, the membrane is more permeable to Na+. These studies made great contributions to our understanding of nerve cell excitability, and those involved with this research won a Nobel Prize for it in 1963. Still, it was years before the ion channels they hypothesized were proven to exist. We now know the three-dimensional structures of many of these channel proteins.